Thank you for watching on our second episode on Velvet Brick Podcast. I want to give a special shout out to those that watched our last podcast about Facebook safety and social media safety. It meant so much to me that you were sharing our video. Please also check out our YouTube as well on Velvet Brick Podcast. So today we're going to be having a special guest from New England. His name is Peter Needham. But before we bring him out, let's see this video. I don't drink often, but when I do, I know my limits. Stay sober, my friends, and enjoy every precious moment life has to offer. Stay in the moment, my friends, and reap all the rewards you so richly deserve. And besides, sobriety can be so sexy. So, we're going to bring out Peter Needham from New England. Peter, are you there? I am. Hi, Tron. How are you? I am great. How are you? I'm well. It's a beautiful day here. I'm actually uh, south of Boston. Uh, that's where I hail from, and it's about 75 degrees and couldn't be nicer. Oh, wow. Otherwise, <laughs> I wish it was 75 here. It's getting hot. <laughs> yeah, uh, we've, had a nice, we've had a nice run of weather. I'm trying, talking about temperature. Nice. We've had a lot of rain, rain. We're green. We're so green up here. It's crazy. Wow. So tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we'll dive into what inspired you to do the video. Um, well, quickly, I, I've been a lifetime software developer, which I just left the industry um, last year in January. I, I just I just felt cooped up in an office and I felt like I had no creativity. So um, 10 years before that, I had gotten into acting, um, joined Boston Cast and my first movie. I was an extra on The Fighter. It's a Mark Wahlberg movie. I don't, I'm sure. Oh, yes. Know. And uh you know, I, I, I was hooked. And I mean, not that I was going to be necessarily an actor. I didn't have any false allusions to that. But I liked the creativity, all the people that I was meeting on the set. So I I then took voiceover lessons, uh, voice of professional voiceover training, I should say, from uh, a gentleman named Jordan Rich of WBZ Radio in Boston. And um, and he's become a fr good friend of mine now. And uh, so I launched into that, in which then I built my own recording studio at home to do voiceover work. But I also have my own cable TV show in Plymouth, Massachusetts, which I co-host and produce. It's called The Venus and Mars Show. Um, oh, wow. So I'm hoping to get that. I'm working to get that broadcast in the Boston network, uh, Boston, Boston area as well, a couple of other stations. So anyway, um, you know, I've dabbled in, uh, I don't know, I've probably been an extra in 12 movies or so. I've been a, uh, I've been a principal in an independent movie. I was King, uh, King Poseidon. Uh, I had to grow my hair pretty long, and I had a long, long beard for that one. Um, <laughs> I also um, have done about six to eight TV commercials, which I've been the principal. It's nice to have lines. It's fun. Yes. And uh, I've been on uh, a couple of live shows. I've been in theater. Uh, I've been an onstage narrator. I've been a guest on a couple of radio, um, not radio shows. I was a like a DJ or a guest DJ on Hurricane Radio. Okay. So anyway, um, I've got all these things going, you know, that that just, if nothing else, very satisfying because it, it, it allows one to be creative. And, and, you know, you're always honing these crafts. They're never, they're never, excuse my Boston accent, but they're never... <laughs> They're never, um, they're never boring, you know, and you, Absolutely. And, you never should, and you never can be satisfied. And I don't mean beat yourself up, 
but I meant that, you know, you always got to keep, be hungry. Absolutely. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about the uh, video that you did. What inspired you to do that? And how did you get approached to do it? Um, well, when I was King Poseidon, um, I wish I sent you a picture of that. You could have flashed that out. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> um, but um, no, when I was King Poseidon, I was growing the beard. And before I, I started shooting for the movie, I went I went on vacation down in Florida and in, um, in the Carolinas. Okay. So I had the beard, the, the length of the, the most interesting man. It wasn't long yet for the, for the king yet. Um, and it seemed like many strangers, especially when I went to bars, bartenders, or people would stop me in, in a, in, in a uh, social, uh, well, I shouldn't say social, public arena and said, you know, you kind of remind me of that, you know, that Doseki guy. So that's when the first, <laughs> you know, it started because, um, I don't know, I guess we're about the same height. I got grayish white hair. I had the beard. I was in my, I was always dressing in black and white, mm -hmm. so sort of like that, that look. So an idea came to me. I said, you know, it'd be kind of neat to kind of do a spoof on him, but mm -hmm. I didn't know really what. So I tried to get it together four years ago, and I had everything lined up, and I came up with the idea that you see now, uh, you saw just now, and um, but I couldn't, I, I just couldn't get the um, locale to, to to shoot it at. Okay. So very quickly, I uh, I took bartending lessons at a school um, earlier, uh, mid last year, 2018, and I approached the owner and said, "Can we use your bar to, can I use your bar to shoot?" A spoof you know a, 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 a spot and she readily agreed and so then everything took off after that i started contacting cameramen uh, uh editors actresses and i um wrote the script and we filmed it in january and then i got the voiceovers done in april and it was finished in may so wow. The reason why I wanted to do it was first I wanted to make it some sort of joke spoof, but then I thought, why not do the opposite of what? I mean, I'm not going to say he's promoting drunkenness. He is not. Yes. He's just saying, stay thirsty, my friends. You know yes. that sort of thing. So I was going on that kind of like thing and saying, I say, well, how about stay sober, my friends? And it's like mm -hmm. all the you know, pretty much saying, trying to show that you can have it all without you know getting out of control. Oh, exactly. You know, you know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with having a few drinks. I'm not advocating, uh, I'm not promoting, um, you know, abstination. Is that a word? Exactly. Abstination? Yeah, abs <laughs> and, um, but at the same time, uh, I think everybody knows somebody killed from a drunk driver. I know I know several. Yes. And, uh, you know, it's just showing that's another side of life that if you want to have that, if you want to trade it in for alcohol, go ahead but this is what you're going to be missing absolutely you know, so. so that's Peter, why i showed yeah. this is annette producer i i actually got a photo i'm gonna flash that on the screen of your beard looks very mighty people can oh, see yeah, it right now it. yep yes. yep we can see that a very good beard all right sorry i cut you off but i thought people definitely oh, no. need to see the beard <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, so i was raising my scepter or whatever it was to the sky and i think lightning came out of it or a bolt but uh <laughs> but uh <laughs> No, I don't want to, I'm not, I, I know I can probably go on. I probably said already what needs to be said on it. It's just something that, I guess, let me put it this way. Personally, I'm so satisfied I did this. Not because maybe people don't think it's very good. I don't really, that's not really what's important. I yes. wanted to do it four years ago. I couldn't do it. But then I had the occasion to grow a beard again by going to this class and that I saw it through. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. It's a goal that I had and I saw it through instead of saying, Oh, well, that that window came and went. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, I'm what really touched me about the video that you did, especially in the Korean culture, I've been watching a lot of K-dramas. And one of the things that the highest problem that, you know, we have in our culture is drinking. You know, when people are stressed out, let's go for drinks. When someone is depressed, let's go for drinks. When you want, when you're bored, let's go for drinks. But one of the things I started seeing on a continuum when it came to a lot of these Korean dramas, and I even see it in my own culture, 
is that no one talks about prevention or safety or how to be responsible. And just like you, I, you know, well, with me being a recovering addict, my poison was more narcotics, not so much of alcohol. And there are some people that may disagree that may disagree with me that they believe that, oh, well, if you are on cocaine, you can be addicted to drinking. I disagree with that because drinking was never my thing. My father was an alcoholic, but he was a happy drunk. But I was definitely afraid when he would start driving. And so uh, when I was in high school, I actually joined, you know, Students Against Drunk Driving. And we would volunteer to take students home if they went out to a game. And it wasn't so much that we told them you can't drink, but let's drink responsibly. And so I really appreciate you doing that video because it also shows there's nothing wrong in being sober. There's nothing wrong in being responsible. And especially with vehicular manslaughter, I've seen people you know, as young as 20 years old that got an amazing promotion. He went to celebrate. So he goes out and drink and then he's wasted, but then he gets in his car and all of a sudden he hits a mother with three children and he's in for life versus someone who intentionally hurt people like murderers, abusers, pedophiles, you know, things like that, where a drunk driver can be served for life in prison. And this is something that's very serious and we need to continue the education of being safe. Well, I, um, I've had alcoholism in my family, so I'm no stranger to it. Absolutely. And, uh, and also uh, somebody close to me just got arrested for drunk driving. Mm -hmm. and, you know, after this, after this film, you know, even after it. So, yep. um, you know, fortunately nobody was hurt or anything like that, but uh, it's a reminder that, uh, as I said earlier in the show, that I think everybody knows, and it's not a pain, it's not a pleasant thought to recall, but I think we all know somebody or know of somebody that has been killed by drunk drivers. And um, it's a real, yes, you pointed out, there's no intention. It, there's, that's true. That's mm -hmm. what the real sad thing is. Uh, yep. It's not like a person's out to get, and how many cases do you see people get murder somebody and they get let off somehow? Exactly. <laughs> you know? But exactly. I know those are two different those are two different arenas, but um, it, the one thing I do, and one more thing I want to say about that video is that the stars of that show and the point of that was the middle scene is with the children. Yes. And in this case, they were supposed to be my grandchildren. Aww. So, in other words, I'm, I'm showing it being in a bar, then I'm showing being with my grandchildren. Now, the last scene, yeah, I mean, I had you know some reservations about it because it looks like I'm just you know you know having a good time. I'm with younger women. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't. That's why the line says, "If you can, re it, it sort of True. pokes fun at myself." Yes, not real saying this is what I'm doing. And besides, exactly, sobriety can be so sexy, really Ex important. To, it's the sobriety itself. Yes, but I, I, want to have, I want to have the girls there because they were classic. That's a classic yes. type of setting. So exactly, I know maybe all everybody might not be thrilled about it, but I was just trying to you know, get the, get people's attention. Exactly. <laughs> well, I totally agree with you. And to me, you know, I don't see anything wrong in the video, even to have attractive women standing next to you because they're constantly in other videos and other tabloids that promote drinking and getting drunk and things like that. And so I would feel safer with someone who is responsible in their drinking than someone who doesn't care how much they drink and how much people they hurt in that situation. And so, you know, so I want to thank you so much, you know, for sharing that video. Is there anything else you want to share? Like, what are you passionate about? Is there a social issue that you want to share? Mm. I guess, you know, without being, I mean, you know, like, I don't know. I'll probably go on and on about it. <laughs> I mean, I'm passionate about a lot of things. Um, I mean, one time I, I you know, I'll, I'll write into editors or things. I don't just complain. Like, for example, um, 
I'll, this is a quick one. I can use this okay. a little example. I'm driving down the highway for three months, you know, three straight months. I go to work every day down the same highway, and there's this billboard mm -hmm. that's up, and it shows a jewel, a, you know, a diamond ring on a, uh, on a finger. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the caption was, <clears throat> because she puts up with you. And I was like, you know what? I'm getting tired of this, 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 because she puts up with you. Mm -hmm. And I wrote in, I said, you know, I don't think you'd ever do that to any other group. And I know what you're saying here, but next time I buy my jewelry, I'm going to go to an establishment which caters to gentlemen, not yeah. buffoons and idiots like you're, you know, putting yep. out to be. I realize it was supposed to be funny. I get it. You know, the humor. Mm -hmm. But you'd never, I, I, I challenged them. I said, you wouldn't do this. To, you wouldn't say because she, he puts up with you, you know, mm -hmm. to, you wouldn't do that. And I yep. guess what I'm saying is, is that if we're going to move forward on all these on all levels, if you know what I'm talking about. Yes. Every everybody is included. Everybody's got to move forward, and every nobody is, you know, there's no exceptions. Is what I'm saying. It's true. It's everybody. That's. I guess that's just kind of the things I am passionate about. You hear about people wanting to improve everybody's lives. Yeah. But you don't always get that feeling. It's everybody they're talking about. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's all I I totally get it. <laughs> That's just one little example is what I'm saying. It's like, you know, enough's enough, you know? Exactly, exactly. Or, or mix it up. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. So what I wanted to also um, remind everyone before we go into our safety tip, um, I do have a GoFundMe. I am raising 35000 for a pre-production cost to do the pilot pitch packet it's um, my website is www.iamchongkim.com. And when you look on the welcome page, you'll see the GoFundMe link. Please donate. You'll get um, um, perks. You'll get to come to our wrap party as well as our red carpet. You'll be credited. We'll even promote your business, um, what you're doing. And um, Aside from that, I want to also um, share more on the social media tip as well as going back to the uh, sober, especially when you're going out with friends. Um, one of the things that I want to throw out there for the viewers, if you have any solution, um, one of the things that me and Anna were talking about earlier is that other than sending a screenshot of the Uber or Lyft driver, and there's me, because um, I also drive for Lyft. And so um, I you know, want to make sure that when you're calling Lyft or Uber, you, have, you can actually screenshot or you can even share your drive, your ride, to your friends. You can send a text, you can send a link. Now, one of the big questions that I'm noticing, um, and I even asked this myself, what happens when you're at a bar with some friends and they invite you to get in a car with a guy you don't know? You don't know how long she's known him. You have this gut feeling and you're not feeling quite right, but yet you're down to your last dollar. You can't call an Uber or Lyft. So what can you do? So I'm going to leave that question for the viewers. If there's any law enforcement that I know that on college campuses, some places will offer free rides for anyone, especially women and young girls that feel in danger that wants to have a safe ride home. Is there programs um, out in Boston that has anything like that, Peter? Well, well, it's funny how you mentioned. I'm a Lyft driver too, you know. Oh, nice! <laughs> uh, I think it would be well, one of, interesting one to of hear. The tool, the toolbox, you know. Um, yes. Oh, I I can't think of any. You know that this is rather novel. What you're just what you're talking about. I never, you know, I have never heard of anything like that around here. Not to gotcha. say that there, there there isn't. I just have not. True. I know that. You know, 20 years ago, and, and I'm really showing my age, 20 years ago, I used to go bar hopping. And by the time I got to the last bar, I didn't have any money. And I didn't have a car. 
And so I remember, you know, I was bold enough to hitchhike a ride to people I didn't know. And this is how I know that God was watching me because I didn't get hurt. And I could have. But then I think about my scenario in today's society. Is there, you know, a program or a nonprofit or Mothers Against Drunk Driving that offer designated driving for um, students or even people, you know, at bars? Um, who do you trust? Who can you rely on? So if you guys have any solutions or recommendations or even resources, please drop in the comment below with our YouTube or even on our podcast page on Velvet Brick Podcast on Facebook. We would love to hear from you. Um, the other thing I want to also emphasize, when you're going out for drinks, be sure to watch the bartender, see what ingredients they're putting in your drink. If at any time you feel nauseated, something doesn't feel right, this is your regular drink, you know, contact a friend, let them know. But one of the things I want to really emphasize for anyone, it doesn't have to be female, it can be male, female, young teens, college students, even seniors, when, before you go out, make sure you create a safety plan before going out. Make a list of friends that you know you can count on, that you can call at 2 o'clock in the morning and say, hey, I think my drink got spiked. I need you to call the police. I'm going to be at this bar, but if I don't get home at a certain time, please call the police for safety reasons. It's really important to create that safety avenue because you never know what's going to happen. Chuck, Most I actually have some recommendations as well. Sure. Um, so if you ask for an angel shot, um, oh. the bartender will know that there's a dodgy situation happening and they will escort you out the exit door. Um, nice. Yes. And there's another one which is ask for Angela um, and they will know that they need to get you. you there may be something they're uncomfortable with. So they okay. will make sure that you can exit. Okay, and that's in DFW, correct? That's across the world. Well, uh, at least in America. Yes, oh, it's okay. an ongoing thing that people that people have been told. That's the keyword, the safe keywords for bartenders. Nice. Yes. Nice. That's and, really good to know. Oh, I'm, I'm looking at a link that says an angel shots and secret cocktails. They can save you from a bad date. So I'm actually, it's nice. posted by Bravo. <laughs> nice. That's really interesting. I'll have to do some research and look more into that and... Maybe we can have a conversation with them and see what got them started on that. Yes, and even on bathrooms, on ladies' yes. restrooms. Yes, they, Absolutely. they have that. The other thing I want to share with uh, some of the people that aren't aware, there are some QT gas station where it will say safe here, and it's primarily for teenagers, teenage runaways. So I know that before I was 18 or before I was 21, I used to sneak into nightclubs that was supposed to be for 21 and over. So if you're a teen and you're in danger and you need to get out of a car and you see a QT gas station, you can definitely go there, tell them you're in trouble, and they will provide help. That's also good to know. I know that some of the other gas stations are also looking into um, joining in this prevention. And so, um, but I want to share with everyone about the uh, Lyft driver. Please take a screenshot and, you know, take a screenshot, send it to three of your friends, do the ride share, let people know where you're going, where your route is going. If you notice that the Lyft or Uber driver is taking you to a different route or your friends are noticing because you're passed out, they can also contact the company and say, hey, we've been following this ride. This person is not taking our friend the right direction. Um, so these are things to look out for. Um, yes, and also um, you can share. I know that on Uber you can say um, share my ETA or my trip with this person. So we will send a real time traveling journey or journey of uh, where you are. And that person has access to where you are in real time and it can contact authorities. Awesome. That is so great. So I want to close out. Um, I want to recap the GoFundMe 
Uh, we are raising 35000 and so far we've raised 450000 so we have quite a ways to go, or if you know anyone. $450, uh, dollars, not yes, thousand. More, $450. <laughs> uh, I apologize. There $450 dollars that we have raised so far. If you know anyone that's willing to be a sponsor or an investor for our full pilot, you will get a finder's fee, and you'll also get credit, as well as they will get credit on our pilot. And so uh, for those of you who don't know, um, we also have the National Human Trafficking Hotline. That number is 1-888-373-7888. Or if you Google the National Human Trafficking Hotline, they also have a text number that you can send out a text if you are in danger or if you want to help someone. And for I want to uh, close out with special thanks to... Uh, Real News PR for allowing me to use the studio and allowing me to share uh, my passion about raising awareness on human trafficking to bringing on guests like Peter Needham. Thank you, Peter, for coming, for being on our show. And um, other than that, please tune in to our website at www.iamchongkim.com. You'll also see our tab for podcasts. Click on there to get our latest um, podcast show. Thank you very much, and you guys have a great day.